Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. Okay, so this was uh, that documentary called Hitsville, The Making of Motown. Um, I've been waiting for it was on Showtime, but I and I know there's pieces and clips of it on YouTube and stuff like that trailers, but I hadn't seen the entire thing here on YouTube. But so now here listed on a page called Move, Movie Hub 2. On that page they have the the entire thing is on there. So I've been really waiting for this because there was one specific thing I really wanted to show you from that that uh, I didn't get I haven't had a chance to actually show you that video clip. And so there's one thing from there that I and so I'm gonna go through it now because I know there was quite a few things and stuff, but this one thing really specifically was like wow. And so now Think about in the relationship of that's Barry Gordy on the left and this is Smokey Robinson on the right. Think about the relationship of these guys in the context of what I'm saying that what happened is that when these two met in August of 1957, they start to develop a record company which turns into Motown. But Diana Ross sees that occurring too and so then she allows uh, Smokey Robinson to have sex with her right after these two meet and she gets pregnant. So then Michael Jackson being born on August August 29th of 1958, what you'll see is that's right before that the real development of like Tamla and Motown, you'll see that it's right after that that then they just they then they proceed and everything goes through. It's but they had a problem though is because once they met then uh Smokey Robinson got Diana Ross pregnant, so Smokey Robinson's connection with Barry Gordy then, they had a real problem, they had an issue. So, like I said, they had to get rid of that kid. Once they got rid of him, gave him away, then they developed into Motown, everything flourished, and they all became big stars and everything. But so, this first, so that's that's the part of when I, when you see these two talking, look at them talking in the context that they understood, they are understanding that Michael Jackson is actually the child of Diana Ross and Smokey and that that child was given away. Okay, so look at their relationship of how when they speak to each other, you can see the way they look at each other and there's an inside joke when they're looking at each other and this is what it is. This is what's actually going on with them. I always thought maybe I could one day in my life compete with him with girls, you know. <laughs> But that was out of the question. You're hearing this story from Casanova no, himself. No, no, you're hearing this story from Casanova <laughs> himself, you know. I mean. <laughs> you know, Bob Dylan's called him America's greatest poet, and he really did write poetry. He was so odd. Okay, so then I'm watching this here, because then the next part's the part that I really want to show you with the Barry Gordian Smokey. <clears throat> and so then there's a couple things like right here I'm going to show you too but so this part right here so since I'm saying Smokey Robinson is Michael Jackson's real father I'm obviously thinking there has to be actual physical attributes for the match up with Michael Jackson and Smokey and I have some that I look at I think more of the Diana Ross is where it is but I see the Smokey stuff too but it's harder to see it okay but so then this picture came up right and see how young Smokey looks there and so but when this picture came up I instantly looked and I saw the ear and I'm like so I stopped it and I'm like wait wait I'm like huh I'm like that ear I'm like Michael has an odd looking ear you know so then I went looking for a picture of Michael's ear so I could compare the two of them right so so here's a picture of Michael's ear. Okay, so now the main thing here is this picture's in color where the other one's in black and white. And so now this one, you can see this defined bone here that with the separation in Michael's because it's in color and because of shadows and things. And that's why with the pictures, you're going to get little things. So I'm trying to look at all of it though, right? But you'll see this, this opening, the way it's open here, to me it looks odd, right? The way it is. And you look at Smokey's, does, see, he's got the same thing, but you can't see the bone because of the shadow of the black and white. You can't see it as clear. But I would think that that bone there, if you see it in a different picture, in a different thing, you would see that bone clearly would look the same as Michael's. And you'd have these weird openings. But So then when I looked off of that, the part up here is, is not exactly the same as Michael's. I think Michael's was a little bit different, but close, you know. But then you come down to here. See how this opening here seems, look at how it causes a weird earlobe for Smokey. Look at his earlobe. It's weird. 
See, it doesn't have like a natural, because this opening is large, it kind of, there's a little bit of a disformation there, which causes this weird little bit of an earlobe. And then so on Michael, that's what it looks like to me. It, this causes, this thing comes up here and it causes him to have a weird earlobe. It's not really there exactly. It's weird looking. But like I said, see here's the shadow right here. There's shadows and it's, it's hard to always tell. And, and why it says in this video here, it's called uh, o OMG Sideburns and Ears. And it's all Michael Jackson. So I look through there and there's a lot of pictures and there's, like I said, it's tricky because you're seeing shadows and the different things and stuff. So I'm trying to look at some of the basic things. But to me, I think there looks like there's similarity. Like I'm saying, Smokey's, I know that Smokey's Michael's dad and I know that Diana Ross is Michael's. I know. There's no mind. And it's funny here because <laughs> uh, you blow my mind. It's funny that it has that statement here on that part. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And then, so, the ears, I think, I think they look sim very similar. And they're odd. I think they're, and I think the earlobe thing, so that's one of these weird things with Michael and stuff. You can do these things like this. You could just look at the ears and go in. Now, like I said, I, I have other things, but I said, but then there's Diana stuff, and it's tricky because then to counter that, you would have to go through the Jacksons, and then you could actually have to go to their grandparents because people can get traits from their grandparents. So all of that stuff's actually really tricky, and that's why I don't go really into the in-depth stuff. But the ear one here, this one to me was like, it's like personal, it's like the ear, and it's, it's, it's weird. And I think that the earlobe part, with the big opening and the earlobe here, I think there's a very much of a similarity here to how Michael's ear is. And it could, you know, obviously would be because that is his real father. So then the main part here, at what first once you hear this little thing here. Um, I'm so straightforward. I mean, the lyrics don't take a lot to decipher, but then you realize it took a lot of genius to write them. Okay, so first he says, and that's John Legend, and he's a, so he's a songwriter. He says, their lyrics don't take a lot to decipher, but you know it takes a lot of genius to write them, okay? But now, think about it in the context of what I'm saying. I'm actually, what John Legend is saying is that you can hear that these lyrics are very straightforward. They're talking about love and situations. Very simple, straightforward things. But when you actually talk about, like, what I'm talking about now is, like, John Legend is given a generalization of an understanding of the song lyrics. I'm coming in and I'm actually explaining the songs, the actual lyrics word by word, like songs like Billie Jean, where I literally explain the whole song. I actually explain what it actually means. What I'm doing compared to what, how John Legend is talking about there, I'm on a whole different wavelength than legendary, like John Legend. I don't believe even John Legend's music and any song he's ever created is as great a piece of art as my explanation of the song Billie Jean. I think I'm much higher level of an artist than anything John Legend could ever be just for my explanation of the song Billie Jean. But one of the other songs is Shop Around is the beginning and that's this here in the beginning and my real explanation of the song Shop Around which that would be something that uh, John Legend would be referring to back in the Smokey Robinson stuff like that. He would be thinking that's a simple song but it's like no no I actually explain it and I explain there's a whole story behind what that song actually is and the whole thing is about that's the song about when Smokey told his mom that he got Diana Ross pregnant and she's like saying don't marry her you need to keep shopping around and you know and that is what leads to them um, giving Michael away you know and that's why that song's so important and that song becomes the big hit and that's how uh, Smokey learns how to develop as an artist to really write from the natural things in life and stuff, those natural occurrences and stuff, and that's how he learns how to develop as a writer that way and stuff. So, but this next part here, now listen to this part here, listen to what Barry Gordy says. At the time, Smokey was doing his thing, singing to the women, <laughs> he created so many babies with his romance and his feeling of that, and a but lot he, of them were his. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, you have to understand the total reality. The, the true facts is when Barry Gordy meets Smokey Robinson, Smokey Robinson has the band, The Miracles. And in that band, at the actual original meeting, is Claudette. 
uh, Claudette Rogers, I believe her name is, Claudette Rogers, which she becomes Claudette Robinson. She marries Smokey like two years after that. They're married. So you let's listen, let's understand the, the reality of the situation that Smokey Robinson meets Barry Gordy. At the actual time they meet, Smokey Robinson is dating Claudette and she's actually in his band. Okay, so Claudette becomes, uh, she's known as a, he gave her a, a title as a, the, like the mother, the mother of Motown. I can't remember what her, the first lady, she's the first lady of Motown. I think that's her official title and she's uh, uh, called the first lady of Motown. Um, but so she's, she's actually a Motown artist. Now think about the reality. And then the other thing is she has, they have two kids and not only do, so, I mean, it's crazy when you just, I, I try to express this because it's so important to understand that what he just said, but you got to understand who Smokey Robinson's actually married to. He's married to Claudette. She's in the band. And then during the 60s, they try to have kids and uh, Claudette ends up having eight, I believe it's eight miscarriages, okay? So during a lot of the time during the 60s, Claudette was not able to tour with the Miracles because she's pregnant or she's dealing with miscarriages and stuff like that. Or she's, or then she's actually touring with them. But there is places there where she's not with them because she's dealing with the pregnancies and stuff. But so she has eight miscarriages, okay? But she actually has two kids. The two kids, the girl is named Tamla and the boy is named Barry, okay, after Barry Gordy. So Smokey Robinson named his first son his first known son, because Michael's actually his first son. But so his first known son, Smokey Robinson names his first known son Barry, okay? And the wife is Claudette, and she's in the Miracles, and she's a Motown act. They were married for years, okay? But she also dealt with all those miscarriages. So Barry Gordy, this guy, is going to make a joke about... Smokey Robinson, okay, of course, Smokey Robinson's music's so good, okay, his music's making a lot of babies are made because of that. Of course, obviously, that's a joke he can make and everybody. But then when he comes back and jokes and he laughs and says, yeah, and some of those babies were actually his. We're in a whole new realm in a world of what the fuck did you just say, dude? And understanding the context of the relation, like I said, Claudette's in the band the day that he meets, the day that he meets Smokey Robinson, he meets Claudette. She's there too. She's in the band. So you're going to tell me that this guy's going to be joking around with, and see, you can see the relationship though with him and Smokey. They're really close and they've got an insider thing. And see, because the other thing is Smokey got Diana pregnant and they gave that kid away, but then Barry is dating Diana Ross from 65 up until around 1970. They're in a serious relationship, which ends up with the kid, Rhonda Ross Gordy, with uh, Diana Ross's first known child, because I say Michael's her first actual child. Diana, so Rhonda Ross is her first known child, okay? So, um, so Diana Ross's first actual known child is from Barry Gordy. So like the connections between, of like what's so, Diana Ross has the kid with Smokey, but then Barry jumps in with her and has a kid with her, has a relationship with her. And so that's how they're joking around with the Casanova. You can see the insider connections of what they're joking around. But for when him to say about uh, Smokey Robinson, oh, some of those kids, uh, some of those kids are his. And you got to think this... Uh, this documentary thing, this making a Motown thing that just happened, this just happened. Barry Gordy's old, okay? He, he actually, like I say, he's the same age as Joe Jackson, and Joe Jackson has died now, okay? So Barry Gordy now is at that age where he's really looking about, when you start getting on your, like they call these deathbed uh, confessions, you know? And so I'm saying like this, this is literally, basically, you're getting a very subtle form of a deathbed confession going on here. But who could understand what's going on there if you don't know that Michael Jackson's the son of Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson? Then you would have no understanding like nobody does. Nobody understood. And then that's why they say this stuff and it's kind of like, ooh, what's the, just joking around and stuff. But it's, and they just, people breeze by it and stuff. But when you actually look at the simple reality of the context of 
did Barry Gordy have a right to say that? To, did he have a right to say that joke to Smokey Robinson? Being who Claudette Robinson is in the band, understanding that their first child's name, Barry, for him to joke around that he's having kids from other women, he's saying he's having affairs on Claudette, his wife at that time, that she's giving birth and dealing with all those miscarriages, okay? He's saying that Smokey Robinson's sleeping around, okay? But now, okay, which he probably was, okay, there's definitely some sleeping around, but when you understand it in the context that it's at the time that they first met that he's not just sleeping around with Claudette, he's sleeping around with Diana Ross at the same time. That's where this is so funny. That's the inside joke. The whole inside joke that Barry Gordy laughs about so much. And see, I even know more that when Barry Gordy first met Claudette and stuff, he didn't know that Smokey was dating uh, Claudette. And shortly after that, Barry Gordy called Claudette and asked her out on a date. And she said, oh, I can't go out on a date with you. I'm dating Smokey. <laughs> so he didn't actually know that they were dating when they first met and stuff. She was just in the band. And, but she was that they were actually dating, and he actually hit on her. And he, at that time, she's only like 15, 16. At the time, she's probably like 16. And uh, <laughs> he's like uh, 28 or something. He's <laughs> so, I mean... Oh, this, this, you know, the stuff about what's going on, like with all of them, there's just crazy, crazy stuff of what's going on with them all the time. And how in the hell does Barry Gordy, that's what I'm saying, it's not just that he says the word, it's you got to understand the whole context of the situation. And look at that big smile on his face. And, you know, when you see him look at each other here, let me just play this just for a second. You see the inside, and it's because they know that Michael is the kid. That's the whole inside thing. And they laughed their asses off about it that Michael became the biggest star of all and that's his kid. That's why he's making this joke. It's not just his kid, it's Diana's kid. It's that it's their kid and he was involved that they all did this and pulled it off and Michael's dead now. So he totally now just laughs in glee about it, right? And that's the thing too. It's like, look at the way he laughs in glee. It, He's laughing in glee that they pulled a scam on the whole world, right? That's the other reality. So that's what I'm saying. I see so much when I'm looking at this stuff. I'm seeing so much more. And it's like, okay, see, Michael's dead now. That stuff, that story's like officially like dead. Like Michael's the Jackson, you know, he's like, it's all gone. We're way, way past that. So now look at him at this time now where we are in the reality at this time. He's like on a deathbed thing joking about that they pulled off this big scam with his two of his main big artists. And remember, he's developing Motown. So this is all about the laughs and the inside jokes about what they pulled off right there. That's what brings this smile and allows him to joke about it in this context, in this situation. It's what the whole thing's about. When you actually understand just the reality that Smokey and Diana is actually Michael's parents and that Barry Gordy was friends with Joe Jackson. That's how Michael got given to him. Then that's how Michael, that's how Joe Jackson brings his way and develops him back to Motown through the connection. Then that Michael had the talent because when you hear the praises put upon Smokey on Barry Gordy, then when you see Michael as the talent, then you see that Barry has the respect for Michael as the artist. Then you see where all of it, that's why then that Barry's the one that uh, starts managing the Jackson 5. He's got personal vested interest in that band because he trusts them. Of the, or he knows the artist of the, what that kid is. And he's willing to deal with Joe and all of the bullshit stuff because Michael is such, he knows. He doesn't have to think about what's he going to be, what's he going to develop. And he knows, because he knows Smokey. He knows who his real parents actually are. And he knows, if this kid is standing right in front of me here with this ability and being with this story, it's one of those things. You know what destiny, now it's come back around, and the kid now has come back. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the joys and stuff, that's what I'm saying. The inside understanding of how all of that stuff happened, and then Michael then passing away, and now they're all sitting here, it's all happened, and they all have lived through it all. It's all happened now. And that's how you see this huge 
smile on his face when he's making a joke about that. And that's what they're joking about. And that's, that's the look of what you're seeing with them here. Watch how they look at each other. Yeah, so that was just, they're joking and all this stuff, you know. So, um, so in this thing, there's just a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff to see. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just looking here at, uh, it's one of those things just with, like, people, if they told you that that was Joe Jackson's brother, then you would think that's Joe Jackson's brother. Like, let's say they're telling you the story of, uh, this, of, of the Jackson family, right? And then let's just say that, uh, let's say that just say Smokey was a part of the Jackson family, right? And then so they tell you here, uh, they tell you that uh, Joe Jackson's brother, Smokey, started his career with Motown, started like that. Let's just say that Joe was his brother. If the story came out that way, right, let's just say that, that that's how the whole story of history was, then everybody would just think that Smokey and Joe Jackson were brothers. Just, you would not, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't question that. Everybody would just believe it. That would be the story, okay? There would be, there is no question, and then, Everybody, then you would see more of that, and then if Smokey then was, if he was related to Joe, then everybody then could start to say, oh yeah, well see, now you can see more of Michael's talent in the Jackson's family, because look at Smokey, and look at his talent, and then you would see it in Michael, then you would start to compare them, just if the story was put out that they were brothers, if somehow, but that's a harder, you can't fake that, right, but they could fake the birth certificate, all the birth certificate has to be done on is that you have to fake it, at the original date, you have to come up with a fake birth certificate. That's all you have to do. If Michael has a fake birth certificate that says he's a Jackson and the Jacksons are saying that he's his kid, who in the world would ever question that? Michael would go to school. They would put him in school. They, the parents would go in and they'd say, this is my kid. You want a birth certificate for proof? Here it is. This is my kid. There were never, so that's what I'm saying. The only thing that had to be done to, to uh, pull off the whole scam with Michael is the birth certificate thing, which like I'm saying, since it happened right at his birth, which it needed to happen because of the Motown's being developed right at that time, it had to happen at that time. So that's all you have to do. You do that, you get that done. It's completely covered up and officially, officially covered up. And the doctor, uh, I, now, there's a thing I haven't gone into with the Jackson family doctor, but it's in the Jackson movies that there is like a family doctor. And I've tried to get a little bit into that, but it's a little trickier. And I don't have as good of information about that. But that's a story like if anybody wanted to uh, do research, there's, there's, let's see, there's with me, there's lots of places for me to get the real information. I like, okay, I would, I need to look into, I've tried looking into it and stuff. And like I said, I've looked and I do believe that the Jacksons have, a fi have an official family doctor that gave birth to all of Catherine's children. I believe it's the same doctor. But now, I'm not exactly sure of all of this. I'm, I'm, and so that's why I don't talk about it. And I don't, but so if somebody wanted to go in and document this stuff and if knows where to get that history, this is a piece of the stuff. So now when uh, Diane, or when Catherine has uh, Marlon, remember, there's, she's actually was twins. It's Marlon and Brandon. And I heard Catherine state that the doctor walked away after she gave birth to Marlon. The doctor walked away, and then the nurse stated, oh, there's another baby in here. The doctor came in, and the doctor was tugging out the other baby baby, which would have been the Brandon baby. And Catherine actually said, she stated to the doctor, she said to him, stop, you're killing my baby. Like, that's what she said. I heard her say, make the statement in an interview. So she literally said that to the doctor and then that baby died, you know? So, you know, I don't, and that's the thing, I don't know the official causes and all this stuff about that, but I think there could have been a thing, a cause related to that. But so, and then Catherine doesn't have another child until Michael comes in the house, which I'm saying she was probably just going to stop having babies at that time. They've got a house full of kids and, and she's now trauma. Now she's traumatized because she's lost one of the kids. And not only did she lose it, she had a kind of an issue with the doctor there, right? So what I'm saying is then if she needed to go then and in turn to ask that doctor for a favor to say, where hey, somebody's given us a child, somebody wants to give us a child and wants us to raise this child, 
and say that it's a young mother. They're gonna and so if Catherine asked that doctor and put it in that and that's framed it that way, and she just says to the doctor, she says, "Can you get us a, a birth certificate to make it official?" Say we don't want to adopt the kid, right? She says we don't want to adopt the kid. The people are giving it to us. We just want to raise it like he's actually ours, you know. She would say we want to raise him like he's ours, you know. She would say we lost. Uh, she could tell that doctor, you know, we lost the one child in the birth, and so this will be kind of like making up for that child see how that easily could work that situation and like I'm saying this is how I know that situation how it how it developed and how things how it all worked out but I don't have the actual evidence of her speaking with the doctor I don't know the actual doctor's history but I know that if there's real investigations there's that's the place where you can look and when you look there and find what you're gonna find out is you're gonna find that that's the right doctor and that's how they pulled it off and because he's the one that basically killed the kid before and then that's why she talked him into faking the birth certificate because they were getting Michael and then they got Michael and that's all there was to it they just had to fake the birth certificate and then that's it so that's how like all this stuff <clears throat> and so all the story but see my story is all the ones that follows the exact real timelines and everything matches up like I'm saying if I would have just started coming out and, and making a story up I could have said uh, Smokey's related to Joe and I could have there's things that would have I could have done it different ways and things like that and then you would have seen that I tried to make up a story because you would have then found the flaws really quick but that's not what's gonna happen when you follow my story you're gonna see that my stories freaking amazing and it follows the patterns the actual patterns of of the Jacksons from Joe Jackson because I go back into the pre Jackson stuff I go all the way back and you'll see that my story lines up all with that within the Joe Jackson early days in his career coming into uh, the stuff of the still worker then developing into the kids I show how that all lines up back with him getting Michael in the house that he didn't start doing that on his own that whole process started to redevelop in the Jacksons because they were given Michael Michael was given to them from Barry Gordy who's developing a record company which Joseph obviously understands he's trying to get in on that that's how that whole thing develops the way it develops and then when they come back then and Joseph has done what he's done and they bring Michael back into Motown and now Michael's part of the Jacksons and so Barry Gordy that's what I'm saying when you see that smile on Barry Gordy's face with him and Smokey and uh it's just uh <laughs> Yeah, with those two. See him? See Smokey over there? Uh, he hears what uh, Barry's saying, and see, he's got his head down, and he's uh, laughing. He, this is inside to them, this inside joke to them, and you can see when they do, they're laughing. That's what, but he actually tells you right on this show that Smokey has kids from other women. Like, and that's all, we, and so why would he feel the need? That's why I always say about these things. And when I show you the realities that he's got no business talking about that because Smokey's hooked up with Claudette and she's a part of Motown. So not only is he disrespecting Smokey, he's disrespecting Claudette and they're both members of Motown, you know? It's, it's you know, which just means they're representatives of Motown, big time. Smokey became a vice president of Motown in 1963. You know, he's hooked up with Motown super big. Like, people don't know how big it is. It's the two of them. That's why this show that's called The Making of Motown, it's the two of these two the whole time. And what's the story that, what's he tell you that, he tells you that freaking Smokey, oh yeah, he, the women love his music and stuff. And oh, he's so, and not only do they love his music and they're having their own babies, that Smokey's actually creating women, babies from other women too, you know? And so that joke, it's just so inappropriate. It doesn't fit everything until you understand the reality of my story. And then you see exactly why they're making this joke, how they're joking about it, and why they're talking about it. Because it's the reality of the making of Motown. Like I say, the actual making of Motown revolved around the birth of Michael Jackson. It's a big deal. And that's why you, they can't avoid joking about it. And there's more to it. There's all these things they joke about, little hints of things they say in this. I'll probably make another video that's a making of Motown talking about it. But see, it takes me times off to go and watch the whole 
thing again. Then I have to mark down. I'll have to mark down the piece I want to talk about, and I'll have to do it. You know, so it takes it. That'll take me time to actually make that whole video and stuff. But it's one that I have in my head that I want to get to and stuff. But I wanted to show you this part at the beginning because this is the one that ever since I saw it, this was the one piece that I was like, "Did you see him? He just said right there, Smokey's got Smokey's got other kids from other women." Um, and it's like, how could he even say that when Claudette, when you know the story about Claudette, it's like the fact that he said that, I've always been like, oh my God, oh my God, could you believe he said that, he said, it? you know, so it's like, like, I just, ugh, I hate talking so long and so forever and stuff, it's, it's so much, it's crazy and stuff, but that's the way it is with the Jacksons, it's just, you just want to keep talking, because there's so much more, and there's so much more, and like, I always have so much more in my head. I always could go here and want to, but I'm trying to end this now. And it's like, okay. but it's like, see how like, that, that, that. see how Barry Gordy right now, how he got the energy, he wants to talk, you know, he's got something to say. And that's how I am. I was like, oh, I got something to say. I got something to say. There's, he's got, he's got another kid. He got another kid. <laughs> and he's got, he got another kid. And one of the kids is his. He wants to tell everybody, Michael's his kid. Michael's his kid. Kid. They want they want to tell people so bad. They want to tell people so bad, but they can't. It's tied up, and they're all involved, and it goes deep. And and then uh, because of the Jacksons, they can't disrespect the Jacksons and expose. You know what they would do to the Jacksons and the image of the American dream, and then how in turn how that would come back and hit Motown. So they'll joke around with it because that's how people do. They that's how people they laugh and joke around and stuff. They think they're like criminals. That's how they do stuff. They don't think they're ever gonna get caught. He doesn't know he's caught right now. He doesn't know I'm out here and I've caught him and I've got all this stuff and I'm out here. I'm coming after him. He doesn't know that he's caught. He doesn't know that he's exposing himself because he's been out here living like the grandest life of all. These people have been awarded presidential. I know I saw Diana Ross. I'm sure they probably all have been given those awards, but I. I know I saw Obama giving Diana Ross like a presidential medal of freedom, whatever thing it is, some massive, whatever award it was, the biggest one she could get, you know, when the president's giving it to you. I saw Diana Ross being awarded that, but I would bet that Barry Gordy's probably been given that same type of award from the presidents and stuff like that. They probably all have, because these are, you're talking about legendary people and stuff. But that's what gives him the courage to joke around and stuff and be this blatant and, and obvious, right? And right on the video that's going to be everybody's looking at, nobody sees it. That's how they, they just get in and look at the, the laugh on Smokey. They just laugh and they know and they're just like, man, I can't believe that's how Smokey's like, brother, you're going to keep telling people the truth. Somebody's going to have. That's what he's really saying because Smokey is smart and he knows. He knows that he's like, dude, somebody like me, like the person I am, Smokey knows. He's like, dude, you keep making these jokes and he knows somebody out there is going to put it together. Some Smokey's smart. He's like, somebody out there is going to put it together, I'm telling you. And that's why you can see Smokey laughing and he gets the joke, but he's putting his head down because he's really inside being like, shut up, dude. Somebody out there is going to put it together if you keep saying this shit. And so it's happening now where it's all coming around for a circle. And that's what I beg and I plead to people that I want my story to come out before the, any of these people die. I want Smokey and Diana and Barry all to be alive. They're the key three. Those three. Those three need to be alive and I need all three of them to have to deal with my story coming back. I want them to, I want to see that happen more than anything and anything. That's what I want to see happen. I want to see them have to deal with it. And that's why I keep saying to Michael Jackson fans, if you're a Michael Jackson fan, you have any Michael respect for Michael Jackson, take those smiles off those motherfucker faces and make them have to deal with what the fuck they did. Be a fucking fan. Do something for Michael Jackson. Make them have to fucking answer for what they fucking did.